Bueno. I'm sure that you're a great, a great expert on legal matters. I doubt your understanding about strategic geopolitics. Uh, uh, the war in Lebanon was the greatest achievement, military achievement, that in the history of the State of Israel and the history of the wars between Israel and the Arab countries. The first time that a result of a war, for seven years now, we have a quiet front. There was not one bullet shot from the north to the State of Israel since the last day of August, almost seven years ago, uh, or 14th of August, when the ceasefire was declared. Is this a, a failure? This is a great achievement. There wasn't a, ever, in any of the Israeli military confrontations, the greatest war in the history of the State of Israel was the Six Day War, right? Three months later, we started the war of attrition in the border of Sinai and in the, uh, uh, at the beginning in, uh, in, uh, in the north. And uh, we made an agreement in the north. And uh, after three years and after hundreds of Israeli soldiers killed, we made another agreement of ceasefire in 1970 with uh, Egypt, uh, only to uh, face the uh, Yom Kippur War in 1973. There was not one war which ended up with complete silence for seven years without one bullet shot and with complete change in the quality of life of the entire north part of the state of Israel. So there was a misperception. <coughs> it was a misperception. I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not criticizing you. You're not supposed to understand it. You're understanding other matters and probably very, very uh, good. But in these matters, uh, others didn't understand at the beginning. Now they have changed their opinion. Why? Because the reality is stronger than the rhetoric. What can we do? And when you see that for seven years the, the uh, Hezbollah refrained from doing anything. Now, not that things didn't happen in the last seven years between us and Syria and between us and the Hezbollah. Many things happened. I can't speak about some of these things. But it was published here in America, not in Israel, of what we did in Syria. Now, in order to save Assad, they sent thousands of troops of Hezbollah to Syria to fight against the rebels. But when it was attributed to Israel that something terrible happened in Deir Azur, 450 kilometers from Israel, that Israel destroyed something which was strategically essential for the Syrian plans, no one responded, no one said a word. Why? because we have created a deterrence in the war in Lebanon. So I entirely disagree with your perception. I entirely disagree with un your understanding. That's number one. Number two, the other lesson which we learned in the war in Lebanon in the custody operation. Now, I understand that the custody operation infuriates, uh, uh, infuriated some of the people that came here to uh, heckle me and to uh, t take me to uh, the uh, international uh, a court of justice in order to arrest me for the rest of my life for war crimes. But I want to remind you that the cast lead operation started only after thousands of rockets were shot at innocent Israelis in their homes in Ashkelon, in, in, in uh, Beersheba, and in Ashdod, and in other places. A million Israelis were sitting for weeks in shelters. Now, I don't know, and I say it to world leaders who ever talked with me, that any country in the world, whether America or Great Britain or France or Germany or Italy or anyone else or Spain, would have sat quiet without responding when one of the cities would have been attacked by 20 missiles by another country or from another uh, border and they would have immediately responded in order to save the, uh, their, uh, the life of the citizens. This is a primary responsibility of every country, is to provide security for their people. But, and this is very important, and I urge all of you to remember it, particularly those who are experts in, in the international uh, uh, law. During the 33 days that we were attacking we were responding to the attacks from Lebanon. 
there was not one time that there was any uh, uh, movement in the United Nations against the state of Israel, including by Arab countries. Not strange? No. You know why? Because Israel pulled out entirely from Lebanon and we responded from within territories which the international community recognized to be part of the state of Israel. And therefore we exercised the fundamental right of self-defense for the Israeli people. That's why we could do it in spite of the fact that from a technical military point of view, maybe, maybe, I'm not that certain, that pulling out from Lebanon gave a certain advantage to the uh, Lebanese. But the fact that we were out of Lebanon justified the Israeli reaction in the eyes of the international community, which is not insignificant. The same is for custody operation. There was not one motion in the United Nations against Israel by any country. And at the end of Castle operation, may I remind you, all of the top leaders of Europe, with a notice of less than 24 hours, came to the residence of the Prime Minister of Israel, Gordon Brown, Sarkozy, Angela Merkel, Silvio Berlusconi, Topolanek, the, uh, the uh, leader of the EU, and uh, uh, Zapatero, Prime Minister of Spain, not the friendliest to Israel, previously, and all of them with about 12 foreign ministers of other countries stood up in front of the televisions and said Israel had a right to defend itself. You know why? Because we did it from within boundaries which were recognized by the international community to be ours. Now, it's true. Do you think that the Palestinians can't shoot rockets if they want today on Natanya and Fasaba and Tel Aviv? the distance between the territories which are now controlled by them and these places, given the range of the rockets that they have, they can shoot anytime they want. So if the range of rockets that the Palestinians may possess is the criterion by which we will judge which borders we need to have, then we will have to go up to Iraq maybe. Is this the solution? I'll tell you what. A terror is a serious danger, and I may assume that even after the end of all the conflict and the signing of peace treaty, there will still be terror here and there. Israel is strong enough to deal with it. It's much better to deal with it than to be isolated entirely in the international community for being perceived as occupiers of territories and of uh, a country which denies the fundamental human and political rights of few million Palestinian people. I don't want to live in such a country. Now, this is one thing. You can choose one, either the nuclear issue or the best. Well, I'll, I'll make it short. I'll make